This is Doug from Mission Repairable, uh, making a, yet again another video. Uh, this time we're working on a Briggs & Stratton. Uh, this is a model 1730 HD snowblower. This snowblower came to me a couple of days ago, actually. Um, it was at another repair shop where he was told the transmission on this particular snowblower was uh, no good. Um, so basically, with these snowblowers, here's a picture of the model number for those out there that are possibly having the same problem with their snowblower as well. But these snowblowers actually come with a plastic transmission. Um, not sure if you can see this. But you got plastic gears for your drive wheels. The transmission is actually a sealed transmission. Inside that transmission is a bunch of plastic gears, uh, bearings. Um, I believe there's a clutch in there as well. So this one, he was told he had to replace this whole transmission because it was basically not driving. Um, he brought it to me basically for a second opinion because to replace this transmission, I believe they're around uh, 500 or just over $500 here in Canada. They might even be more than that. I know I've seen them on uh, Amazon, I believe, for around 470 something like that. So you're still around $500 for that transmission, which is a lot of money for this particular snowblower or any snowblower for that matter. Um, but... All in all, it is a very well built uh, unit. It is, other than the transmission, really. Um, the transmission is, in my opinion, a very poor design. But it's actually not the gears in the transmission that fail. It's actually the, uh, the bearings inside the transmission, actually of all things, the metal bearings that uh, kind of give out first. This particular transmission is, uh, I forget what revision it is, but it has been revised over the years. Um, so this transmission, uh, I would imagine, is a better design. But uh, basically what I'm going to show you is this clutch assembly here is similar to what's on snowblower, or sorry, uh, ski doos like sleds, snowmobiles, stuff like that. Um, so he actually, at the repair shop, they replaced the belts, the drive belt anyway. And I know these drive belts are not cheap. I believe they're around $60. Uh, so they replaced the belt figure, and that was the problem as well. And this repair shop actually was a, a Briggs & Stratton authorized dealer, uh, if you can imagine that. So it turns out what I found was nothing really to do with the transmission at all. Um, what it was, uh, was this pulley system here. So let me get a light. This pulley system here, if you can see, is actually plastic. So I didn't really notice at the beginning when I was testing the unit, but what was happening, um, the cover was on originally when I first uh, tested the snowblower. So basically what was happening, you would put it into gear, um, it would start to move and then it would just stop. Uh, it wouldn't even go maybe two feet. I don't even think it went two feet, maybe a foot, and then it would just stop. So I took the cover off uh, that protects like, basically uh, the guard for the, snow, or the belts. So when I engaged the drive again, I noticed this main drive pulley here was spinning like it should. Uh, but what was happening is as soon as you would engage the drive, this pulley would partially turn and then it would eventually just stop. So I looked a little deeper. I thought maybe it was the springs on this clutch were not really engaging uh, the clutch. But what it actually turns out the problem is, is this pulley being plastic you should not be able to turn this pulley on the snowblower like this. So I got thinking, okay, so what's the issue with this pulley? So what I did is I took the auger pulley off here. 
remove this bolt, took this belt off, and remove this pulley. And in behind the pulley, uh, you can see where the plastic on this drive pulley was actually melted, uh, where it basically sits on the crankshaft. So what, is I'll, what I'll do is I'll pause the video right here. I'll remove this pulley and belt so you can get a better look at this pulley assembly here and see what I'm referring to as far as the plastic uh, melting around the crankshaft. So let me just pause the video and we'll get right back into this. Back. Um, so this is the pulley I'm referring to about as far as removing this. So um, just give that a wiggle, pull this off. Now the odd thing is this auger pulley is actually made out of metal, a pretty heavy grade metal actually. Um, you would think, given that this is a heavy duty, as they call it, model snowblower, this pulley here for your drive would be also made out of metal. So this is what I was referring to here. If you can see how this plastic all around the crankshaft is melted and it literally just spins on the crankshaft. So I guess what was happening is the guys at the repair shop that he had the snowblower before he brought it to me was they were probably looking at this pulley and it was turning at the time and down here you could see it was turning the transmission and wasn't driving so they probably thought oh well that's an internal part in the transmission that's failed so you have to replace the whole transmission but in fact all it was that I think anyway I haven't fully tested it but I'm pretty confident that this is the issue right here because that should not be turning freely like this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this uh, this pulley. I'll have to remove this uh, belt guard here um, in order to pull this pulley out fully. Probably have to move this down as well so I can get to it. But anyways, I'll, I'm going to remove this pulley and show you the new pulley and basically compare them side by side so you can kind of get an idea as to uh, what it should look like. And then you, hopefully if you uh, run into this problem and the repair shop tells you that you have to replace your transmission, chances are it could be the transmission that you need to replace. But in this uh, instant, it's, instance, it's uh, actually the pulley that failed, not the transmission. So hopefully this video helps uh, some people out there because apparently there is quite a few of these snowboarders out there with these style transmissions. And it's not just this model either. I've seen them in even smaller uh, models of snowblowers. I think Arians actually makes a small uh, Snowtech snowblower, I believe it's called. It's a small 22 inch snowblower. They also have plastic transmissions in them as well. So it's not just Briggs and Stratton that is making these plastic transmissions for these snowblowers. Um, I guess the theory behind it originally was a good idea, but there wasn't much thought put into you know, the conditions that these things are working under, given a lot of snow, if you get a heavy snowfall, you can't push these units hard like maybe you would the previous models where they had the friction wheel and drive disc. Technically, you shouldn't be pushing them either as hard, but at least these snowblowers with the plastic transmissions, if you push them really hard under heavy snow, there's a very good chance that you're going to strip those gears in that transmission which a lot of people have had happen where like I said technically it's not the gears that strip it's more the bearings and the bushings and stuff like that that fail the metal bushings and bearings that fail inside that transmission which is kind of odd but uh, so anyways we'll pause the video real quick um, I'll remove this plastic pulley here and then we'll compare it uh, to the new one so you can see basically what happened to this pulley Okay, so we're back. Uh, these are the pulleys, one on the left 
is the old one. So as you can see, it's melted pretty good. Now the new one, as you can see, has little slots. Well, two for sure, but when you put this pulley back on the snowblower, you need to pay attention to um, there's one of these slots that only goes in part way. I believe, yeah, it's this, this slot here only goes in maybe halfway into the pulley, whereas the other one goes down the full depth of the pulley. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but so that one goes down the full depth. This one only goes down part way. So when you install this, line this slot, the one that goes fully, the full depth of the pulley, on your key shaft, keyway on the shaft. Uh, this is, for those out there, this is your part number uh, for this particular model. Briggs & Stratton actually has a pretty good parts breakdown on their website, so it's actually pretty easy to uh, locate your part numbers uh, for your particular snowblower. Uh, but for this model here, it's a 17339681YP. Now here in uh, Canada, this pulley actually uh, retails for $79.95. So it's definitely a far cry from spending $500 on a, a new transmission for the snowblower. Um, so what I'll show you on this snowblower, I did remove the, in order to remove this pulley, all I did was just uh, kind of start it off the bottom side of the pulley here and then I just kept turning uh, the top pulley here a little bit just to kind of walk it off and then once I got it partially off enough I could just unhook the pulley on the top side of the uh, where the crankshaft is and then I just slid the pulley off. Now in order to get this pulley off all I did for the belt guard or guide or guard whatever you want to call it all I did it was kind of up like this so all I did was just kind of push that down uh, because the pulley wouldn't have come off with that belt guard there and then your idler pulley here for your auger all it is is a 9 16 nut and a carriage bolt that goes in here. So that pulley was just on like this. So all I did was just take the nut off, take this pulley off, because this too was interfering with removing the drive pulley off the crankshaft. And then even when you pull the pulley off of the crankshaft, this uh, linkage here bracket that the idler pulley mounts on you have to kind of pull it back towards you just a little bit it has a little bit of play in it so you can still pull it back just a little bit enough for that dry pulley just to slide right off your auger turntable here will kind of interfere as well but it will come off you just have to kind of walk it off a little bit and uh, once you get it off uh, you just reverse the uh, procedure for installing so you would uh, install I'm still debating on how I'm going to install this pulley, whether I'm going to try and hook the belt back onto the pulley and then try and slide it back on to the crankshaft. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention too is this keyway that you see here was missing, I guess because it stripped away, the keyway either fell out, it was not in the uh, bottom pan when I removed it, so it could have very easily fell out at any point or even when he had it at the repair shop the guys at the repair shop might have taken that belly pan off and never noticed that the keyway was there and it fell on their floor or regardless it wasn't there so I fortunately had uh, this keyway in stock um, it's about an inch and a quarter inch and a half long but the thing you got to watch is when you put this keyway back on what I did is I put the new pulley back on. So I tapped it back far enough because you have to allow for enough space for your auger pulley because it already has a keyway molded into it. So you have to allow 
for that pulley to have enough room for that keyway to engage on the pulley. If you don't, you're going to go to all the trouble of putting your pulley on and then uh, you'll try to put this on and you're like, oh man, this isn't going to fit on here. It's, it's not uh, going on the pulley and that's simply because this keyway is out a little bit too far. So you probably wouldn't have to remove the pulley. Uh, all you would have to do is take like a very small screwdriver and just kind of stick it through uh, your pulley if it is on your crankshaft here. Just stick a long screwdriver small enough and then just kind of tap this keyway back far enough that you allow enough room for the, the smaller uh, auger pulley to fit on the front half or front part of the crankshaft. Uh, so that's kind of roughly where I have mine set up right now. I still might have to move it back just a smidgen, but if I do, like I said, I'll do it where I will have the pulley on. I'll make sure that when I put the drive pulley on, chances are what would happen as well is when you put, if you leave it back far enough, I would imagine if I went through the, to complete the uh, installation process, if I put this on, even when I put the bolt back through here and, and tighten it in, it's going to push this keyway back anyway and the pulley as well. So technically it probably wouldn't interfere with um, this keyway being out a little bit too far because when you tighten this auger pulley in, it's going to draw that keyway in plus your uh, uh, drive pulley as well. So more than likely you, you won't have to worry about the positioning of this keyway, but you might as well start it off. Uh, back partially anyway because you're going to need to. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video again. I will install the new drive pulley or sorry yeah the drive pulley and then I'll have all this assembled and then we'll fire up the snow blower and try her out and see how she's working. So we'll pause the video now and we'll uh, be back in a minute. Welcome back everybody. So here we have the new, pull new pulley installed. Uh, so basically what I did, <clears throat> obviously this uh, auger pulley wasn't on here at the beginning, but I put this pulley on first. And as I said, make sure you put it in the right um, groove. As I showed you earlier on the video, there's uh, one groove for the keyway that only goes in partway down the pulley. And then the other groove is the full depth of the pulley. So make sure you, you uh, put the um, keyway slot that's on this pulley uh, down the full length groove, not not the partial one. Uh, but anyways, the belt, what I did is I put the pulley on first. Uh, and then I um, basically just started the belt kind of on an angle here, uh, partially put it on the pulley. And then all I did was just pull on the recoil and it literally just walked right on. So it was actually pretty easy uh, to put the belt back on. Uh, then I put the auger pulley on. And as you can see, it's seated quite nicely. And then a 9 16 ratchet. I have a small cordless DeWalt uh, impact gun that I use. Uh, it's got more than enough power to put this uh, bolt back in all the way. And then I always just double check with the ratchet anyway, just to make sure that it is in tight. Uh, but other than that, uh, then I brought up the belt guard here. I just pulled it back up. And as you pull it back up, it kind of tightens the nut anyway. But you can always put a nut back or sorry, you can uh, put a wrench on there and just make sure that it is on there tight. And then obviously I put the idler pulley back on for the uh, auger drive belt. And as I said earlier, it's pretty simple. Put your carriage bolt in uh, through the pulley. Uh, there, you can only put this on one way, so you gotta make sure, I'm not sure if you can see down inside there, but uh, the one side of the pulley does have a little bit of a longer sleeve on this side of the pulley, so you have to make sure that that side uh, goes to this bracket here where it mounts onto. The other side is kind of like a, a flush out um, on the pulley as you can see there there is no extended sleeve sticking out past the pulley whereas this one here did have a little bit of a longer sleeve 
as part of the pulling. Uh, and then of course you tighten this up as tight as you can go. The tighter, uh, if it's tight, obviously it's not gonna interfere with the operation of this pulley. So now the big test is to try the snowblower and see if she drives now. Um, that's what I'm hoping is gonna happen because as I said earlier, I'm pretty confident that the old pulley that was on here was the main culprit because it was completely melted on the inside of the plastic um, housing of the pulley. So now that I've got this pulley installed, I'm gonna pause the video again. I'll take the snowblower outside and we'll uh, give it a try and see if she drives. So hold on and I'll be back in a minute. Our snowblower running now, as you can see she's in first gear. So we're gonna test our pulley to uh, make sure she is uh, the culprit for a problem of uh, no drive. So as you can see this pulley is turning as it should with the engine running. So we're going to engage the drive and we'll see if it pulls like it should. So here we go. So I'm pulling back as hard as I can and it's easily pulling me along so I would say that was our culprit uh, for the no drive issue. But, uh, plastic drive pulley off the crankshaft. The other issue we have to fix on the snowblower is the uh, chute rotator. Uh, this, this button here rotates the direction of the chute. So as you can see I'm pushing on it this way and it doesn't work. So this is a simple fix that you don't have to replace these switches. It's just a matter of taking them apart and cleaning them. So we'll uh, stop the video. Uh, that concludes our drive issue on this particular snowblower. So any comments or questions just mention them below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks again for watching and this is uh, once again Doug from Mission Repairable. Thanks.